Hello, everybody. It's good to be with you, as always. So today I want to address a topic that um, many of you are already familiar with, when that is once awakening has occurred, there is an, uh, in a, this is the way it will, will be stated, there is an inability for you to stay awake. That's the way that it will feel, and that's what you'll report your problem is. And I know because I have killed countless people through this problem. I mean, just, I mean, just hundreds and hundreds, right? <laughs> So I pretty much know what I'm talking about here. This is not a guess. I didn't get this from a book or a video. This is, this is coming straight from, from the field, from the field of experience here. Uh, because uh, I used to do one-on-one -on -one awakening sessions, and I worked with hundreds and hundreds of people over eight years doing that. And uh, guess what? that is going to begin again here very shortly. Um, and, and I'll begin doing individual awakening sessions on a very limited basis, just a few a month, and we're gonna set the time uh, and date, and we will take whoever can go along with that because it, I, my schedule's already tight and I can't schedule too many because the body just won't take it anymore. So, um, that's coming up, but already this is coming from the field of, of vast experience, no kidding. So the reason from the, from the most true perspective, the reason that you cannot stay awake after you've had an awakening, you know, you've got it, God Almighty, everything's so clear, I get it, unbelievable. Uh, I would have never guessed this, but this is so damn obvious. It's so obvious, it's so obvious that I could never unsee this again until 10 minutes have passed <laughs> or two days or two weeks. And then it's, and it lasts longer than that. And then there comes in the, oh, I don't feel as clear as I used to. And who will be saying that? Fred. Fred will be reporting to the universe that he is not as clear as he used to be, which we can see is a false position because there's no Fred. You may think there's a Fred here and that you're listening to him, but I promise you, you are wrong. There is a body here, with at least within relativity. We'll watch our borderlines today. So within relativity, there is a body here, and there is action here, and um, there appears to be, the body appears to be alive, it's not. Uh, the body is not alive itself, it has an al aliveness within it. And there's an animating presence here. It's this thing, this sense of, the this, this sense of being, the sense of existence that all of us feel right now. And this sense of existence is, and it's ordinary sense of existence. Don't be going for the extraordinary because you're just making shit up and you're not gonna get there. So this ordinary awareness that we're trying to get to is already here. And it's already here because you can't wake up. This is the reason you can't stay awake is that number one, you never wake up. This never woke up. This body never woke up. What you would think of the personality, the Fred Davis part or whatever, uh, that never woke up either. So it begs the question, what did wake up? <clears throat> and the answer is awakeness. And the reason that you can't stay awake, and now this time, listen to me carefully, I am addressing awakeness. I am not addressing individuals. So awakeness, this is awakeness telling you that the reason you cannot stay awake is because you move from an awakened state, having to call it a state for just a moment, we move from, from, the, from the knowledge of a, that we are awakeness, it's a verb, you are a verb awakeness, you are not a noun. 
So we move from this, uh, from, from this verbness of knowing what we are. We don't understand what we are. Nobody understands what we are. It's impossible to understand this thing. Quit trying. Your insistence on understanding non-duality is exactly what's stopping you cold. And I have only de dealt with hundreds of people that had that position, which fortunately I was able to, to turn uh, most of them in session. Sometimes you get somebody who just can't be turned. I, mean, I do the best I can. That's all I can do. Um, <clears throat> most of the time that's enough, but sometimes it isn't. In other words, a whiteness is not ready to wake up through that unit again. And no matter what I do or the, uh, there's, it's just not going to happen. And I got to be okay with that because that is the way it is. That's what is. And uh, I cannot be okay with what is, but I'm going to suffer immeasurably. And I'm, I've done enough of that, I hope. <laughs> we will find out as the time goes on. So the reason that you can't stay awake is that awakeness is because you just don't, at that moment, you don't know who you are. You have misidentified or re-misidentified as this body, as the character, whatever your name is. And over here, it would be the Fred character. And I just could, and, and, and I would think that the Fred character woke up and I would think and claim <laughs> that Fred had just had an awakening. And nothing could be further from the truth. So you are welcome to, to address me in any way that you can in order to get your, your story across. But when people tell me, you know, I woke up two years ago uh, or I, I, I was awake two years ago, whatever, um, I know that actually I understand what they're saying. And it's true from the standpoint that there was an awakening there probably two years ago but you were not awake then and failing to be now because you are awakeness. It's not a matter of being awake or not awake. You are awakeness. The verb, get attached to the verbness of awakeness. See, the body cannot wake up. It's, 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 it is just, it's a cadaver. It's a, it's a, it's a haunted cadaver. It's an animated <clears throat> cadaver. It's an animated, I don't want to say a meat puppet. <clears throat> that wouldn't be that far from the truth at all. But we'll, 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 we'll stay away from that for now because it just is so shocking and insulting <laughs> until it's not. So, um, what happens is the awakeness is that you begin to believe that you are this body. Awakening is coming to see that you are not this body. Awakening is coming to see that not only you are you not a Fred, but there is no Fred and there never has been one. Wow. There just hasn't been a Fred ever. There hasn't been one on this planet Earth. There's never been a Fred S. Davis on this planet. I will tell you that. Never, never, ever, ever. It's, um, <clears throat> but there has been more than one awakening to which this body, we could say, bore witness. Through wit, for which this body was actually an instrument of that awakening. In other words, the body didn't awake up, but awakeness inhabiting this particular unit came to know itself through this particular unit. This particular unit came to know itself as the grand scheme of the cosmos. As the only thing that there is, and uh, within relativity, or, or you know, within within 
we can call it oneness. Actually, even within um, non-duality, we can call it oneness. And it is oneness. And oneness is, is, I'm not saying that oneness is not so. I'm saying that it's so up to, uh, you know, a point. And then we come to see, well, maybe it ain't so. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that today. We just simply want to get you working to where you can come to see <clears throat> that your attempt to keep awakeness with you, to not lose awakeness. I got to hang on to this. God almighty, it's so subtle. I might, I know I'm losing. I've lost it before. And the, your, the very attempt to hang on to this is actually just pushes it away. It does. Because, see, when there's only this, and that's what awakening is coming to see, is that there's only this. And that's the, I'm not saying there aren't deeper things to come to see, but I'm just saying we come to see that there's, that, that coming to see there's only this is plenty. So don't feel like you've missed anything if you come to see that there's only this. That's, a, it's a, that, that's perfect. And uh, um, th through this unit, I came to see that there's only this for a number of years. But, you know, you get to see that on different levels. So while awakeness is like a light switch, it's off or it's on, within this awakeness, there are endless uh, gradations of clarity within the, the energy of awakeness. I'm going, I'm going to call it an energy of awakeness because when I call it an energy of awakeness, although it's not exactly true, I don't, well, I mean, it could be. I don't actually know. <laughs> but within whatever that is that's prior to consciousness, that within relativity is the light of consciousness. And that a light of consciousness allows for all other things. It allows for attention. And it allows for localized attention and non-localized awareness. Attention can be can notice non-local awareness, but uh, I don't know about the reverse. I, I, I do know, but I, I, hadn't, I hadn't thought about that question. I hate to come up here and say something that I have to back down from later. Not that I don't mind being wrong, but I just assume not be publicly wrong if, if it can be avoided, since there are some people that I know are taking these teachings very seriously, as I recommend that you do. Because everything that's said here is tried and true. It's field proven. Not a lot of people can say, well, you know, I've woken up hundreds of people. And that's not, I can't say that either because I've never woken up a single person. But awakeness can say that through this unit, it has come to recognize itself through hundreds and hundreds of people. So there, is, there, are, there are places here between the relative and the absolute. There is this the paradox and where most of us get lost is the paradox whether we've had an awakening and can't sustain it or whether we have not had an awakening and we're looking to and um of course can't wait till it occurs but that is lost in the paradox as well the only thing that is not lost in the paradox, there's not, you are not the, just the little person and you are not the vastness, just the vastness. Because you can see from the vastness that there is no little man, that there's no, that there's certainly no one here in this body, there's no Fred. You can see that very, very clearly. Nonetheless, within relativity, there will be an ongoing experience of the Fred life. And what will be having that experience? A whiteness. What will it feel like? Feels like Fred's got it, but there's no Fred. So we have to hold the truth a little loosely 
and non-duality, right? We just want to hold it a little loosely because when we try to nail it down, we miss it. We just try to, we try to nail it down. You just bust the nail in the hammer and the board. So just don't try to nail this down. Don't try to hold it <clears throat> because the thing that's trying to hold it is it. This is trying to hold this. There's only this. Is it possible for this to hold this? Can it? Can this possibly cram this into a head? But that's what we think has happened. We think that consciousness, consciousness comes through this apparatus, but it does not. It is does not initiate through that apparatus. That's it, it, the, 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 the mind is a wonderful processor. It's just not much of an initiator. Feels like it, but um, there, there, there are, I'm sure, um, neuroscientists on both side of that, sides of that, because there are neuroscientists on both sides of everything that I've, I've investigated. But the ones that I'm throwing in my lot with, and that's a bunch of them that have been students, some of them, is that the, the mind is a processor, but it's not an initiator. And that thought is not, it, it, thought may be, an, it's not really being initiated by this mind, it's being initiated through this mind. It's a, it may feel like a subtle difference, but it's actually quite profound. So the reason you cannot stay awake is because you've gone back to believing that you're this body. When you are clear, and I can, I can so, so let me ask you this question. Or this is, a, this, is a, this is a question that I'm almost reluctant to ask because it's such a good question that I like to reserve it <clears throat> for specialized impact. And I'm gonna keep that one. I'm, a, I'm sorry I mentioned it because I'm just afraid that it will be, um, that most of you will miss it through this medium of uh, broad video, right? And in other words, I don't have 15 of you in a room or 30 of you in a room or 50 of you in a room. I've got thousands of you, you know, or, or certainly, um, yeah, I've got thousands of you who will eventually watch this video. So I'm afraid that it might not carry. The, but the reason you cannot stay awake is because you have gone back to believing that you are this body and you're not. You've gone back to believing that you are this personality and you're not. That personality is conditioning. You think it's your personality, but where's the your? This is my personality. Says who? There's no Fred here. So it cannot possibly be Fred's personality. But it feels like that Fred looks like Fred is claiming it. It doesn't feel like that over here, but it used to. But by that same token, I don't say, well, I might say I woke up. I'll say it because it's almost impossible not to say th untrue things like that when you're teaching non-duality. You cannot not contradict yourself because you're talking out of both sides of your mouth at the same time. You're talking out of the relative side and you're talking out of the non-dual side, the, the, the absolute side. So <clears throat> we have duality, we have non-duality, and I'm gonna call where I speak from uh, fluality because it is fluid. It's not perched in relativity and it's certainly not perched in the, 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 the vastness. It's not perched, period. It, flows and that flow is what is is what makes <clears throat> that flow is this teaching which is where we get to see both sides at the same time because that's the way that I see things I mean I don't necessarily always look at uh, 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 like my my little boxes with my knife collection pocket knife collection over there, I've got beautiful little boxes, and but and and they and they are me. They are awakeness. They are they are consciousness. 
and consciousness springs from awakeness. It is not awakeness. Awakeness is beyond even comprehension. But they look like objects. I would report them as objects, even now. I mean, Betsy came in and she said, uh, how about picking up your knife box? I would say, well, there's no box there. I mean, <laughs> if I say that, I'm, you know, I can expect to miss my dinner or get walloped, right? So I'm not gonna do that. Um, the, Consciousness is the light in which all of this plays. Go back to our rainbow example. What is a rainbow? It is really, it's an expression of light. No light, no rainbow. Now, just so happens, no water, no rainbow either. Because it's, it is, an, it is, but it's the conditioning. It's the just raw conditioning. That's all it is. There's nobody down there saying, time for a rainbow. <laughs> let's, let's hoist one up the, the post. Uh, nothing like that. It's just that the sun gets to be a certain way and the water gets to be a certain way and there's a rainbow. And we make up all kinds of stories about them that they're lucky or that there's, you know, gold about them and, and leprechauns and God, I mean, it's just tremendous, you know, in religious significance. Well, I remember those stories from being a child, when I was a child. And so there's all kinds of stories about these things, but there's nothing there. <laughs> it, is a, it is conditioning rising to meet circumstance. There is the, there is the conditioning of light. There is the circumstance of, of introduced moisture just the right amount and at that point boom we get the image of a rainbow and what <clears throat> this unit is is it's the image of a rainbow but we're not going to talk about that we just want to talk about why you can't stay awake the reason you can't stay awake is because you're claiming that the unit the character the Fred character, after, the, after awakening expressed itself through this body in 1992, the next thing that happened was the Fred character. There's no Fred. And there's really no Fred character, but the conditioning, the patterns that were, were there, the patterns somehow arise. And the, 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 it is the most significant thing about these patterns that are there is that they cooperate on some level and there is a sense of a center. They begin to operate as if there's a center there, but there's not. <laughs> there's nothing in the middle. There's nothing in the center. You know how you look at a Tootsie Pop and you get all that horror candy up, off and you come to the little soft, like Tootsie Roll thing in the middle of it? Well, this ain't like that. <laughs> When you get to the end of this Tootsie Pop, there's, there's just spice. It's like coming to the end of an onion. I'm going to cut up this young onion, and I'm going to keep cutting it until I get to the middle. But you just keep peeling leaves off, and you can go all the way down looking for the center. And when you pull off that last leaf, you got air. That's what you got. You got nothing. And that's the way it is with our Tootsie Roll metaphor or our, our Tootsie Pop metaphor. And that's the way it really is. Uh, it, it, you know, it's, it is, we just had a, a big hurricane in the US and uh, God almighty, you could see it coming ashore and it just blew the hell out of a whole lot of stuff. It's gonna be a you know, big mess to clean up. I know people killed and people disowned and all that. And it's one of those, things where you have great human compassion, but the paradoxically, you wish those people the best. You may even send them, uh, you may get on a bus and go down there, fly down there, whatever, get your car and go down there to help. Or you may give some money to help. I was not, I'm, I'm not going to uh, New Orleans, but I, I will take care of the other part. 
So I am not without compassion. I am completely compassionate. At the same time, I'm not disturbed by it. When I say that, I'm speaking as a whiteness. Because, see, that's what is. That's um, um, Betsy had a relative die today. It's a guy she'd known all her life. Cousin. He was on his roof. He had a heart attack. He was dead before he hit the ground as he fell off the roof. So I am compassionate about that too. But I'm not bothered by it. Well, actually, what I told Betsy was, let's be glad it wasn't us. That sounds so selfish, but it's not. Because there's no self here. How can it be selfish when there's no self? That doesn't mean we can't spot selfishness and relativity. I don't want to give that off that idea. Give up. And now I'm talking to a whiteness. I can't talk to a, I can't talk to a Bob or a Carol or a Sue or a Tom. I just can't. Because there's nobody over there. I don't care who's watching this where. I don't care what their beliefs are. I don't care where they're standing, what their standing is in the world, or what they or, or what um, if they belong to some religious group. I don't care if they um, are just just in spirituality in general. I, that's fine, but I, it makes no difference. There is no one over there. Period. There is. It seems like there is, doesn't it? And we can see it, we can report on it, just like we can a rainbow. It's virtual reality. As some of you have heard this before, many of you have heard this before, but I'm gonna I notice I'm gonna tell it again. Is that having experimented with virtual reality, the thing that becomes just crystal clear in a way that I had never quite seen it before, because it was not. I was not in it. It was not my actual experience. It was, I was projecting rightfully or, or truthfully, correctly, what, um, what virtual reality would be like. But, it, but I was projecting my idea of it, but I couldn't quite get the thing because it wasn't my experience. And then it was. And as having virtual reality on, like with the, uh, the goggles and all that, um, having, having that, had that experience, I can tell you the most profound part of that experience was taking the goggles off at the end. Because at that point, it is undeniably, so incredibly clear that first, was, oh, this is all virtual too. And it is. This is a virtual reality. When I was... Uh, under the influence of goggles, grabbing under the influence of goggles, um, I saw things that are not. My brain just cooked them up. We're in, a, in, in an interface with God only knows what kind of computer programming. It blows me away. I wouldn't even attempt. I mean, it's magic to me, honestly. It's at that level. Arthur said, Lee Clark said that any significant, whatever, scientific advance will seem to be like magic at first, will be thought of as magic. And I got to tell you, virtual reality to me is magic. It's unexplainable. It's, it, it seems like it should be undoable, but they do it. But the most amazing part is that this is virtual reality. So the, the, the it feels sort of like like this being put on goggles and had a um, virtual experience. But this being is also a virtual experience. So this being took virtual goggles. It put the virtual goggles on the virtual being. And then it went out and had, what could we call it? Vertical squared? <laughs> I mean, virtual squared? 
experience? What is it? I don't know, but it just, it just that, you know, the, the virtual, it, the virtual reality by itself it blows me. I can't possibly try to figure out, you know, all the, the things that I, I just don't know anything about other than the fact that I can tell you that a virtual character had a virtual experience and it saw things that it could report on, that it could believe in, um, not with, you know, uh, believe in enough that it could experience them, tell stories about them, and would, would certainly notice that if, if, I, if I held a gun in a certain way, you know, if I put my hand in a certain way, um, that I could shoot stuff down. And um, if I didn't hold it in the right place, it wouldn't go down. So there is a sense of self-control in there, but hell, there's no control in this virtual reality. So how are we gonna have any control in that one? Not I'm gonna get myself dizzy here. Why can't you stay away? Because you forget who you are. And then you go out trying to find yourself. I got to get back to it, or I've got to get to it for the first time. First time, last time, anytime. I got to get to awakeness. I got to get to a, what we'll call it as awareness, or I've got to get to oneness. And uh, good luck on getting to oneness. I mean, <laughs> trust me, it is an ironic statement. <clears throat> Relax. Your awakeness, whether you know it or not. Yes, coming to know yourself through one of these units is a lovely experience. But my neighbors are not missing it, right? I sometimes think that there is like a church of seekers out there, the church of seeking. And that we just don't want to give up our place in that church. We're like deacons <laughs> in the church of seeking. And we got our own little life and we got our friends and we got our everything set up. We're, we're, we're hip, right? We got bohemian stuff like I've got all, everywhere. We dress kind of bohemian and um, I can be guilty of that. The, uh, but actually, I'm just guilty of wearing sports clothes now because I'm old and it feels good. <laughs> I don't give a shit what anybody thinks. And I've either got on some kind of cool KUHL pants or, um, uh, or sweatpants, something like that, something very comfortable. As if you needed to know that. Who knew you needed to know it? But clearly you did because it was said. You don't actually need to know who you are because you are who you are anyway. Awakeness is always awakeness. It cannot fall out of itself. Oneness cannot fall out of itself. Where would it go? This is it. And there's a period. Let's try that again. <laughs> this is it. And there's a period at the end of that sentence. And it's just absolutely ridiculous that can, a man can make a living telling people this is it. But it seems to be happening, been going on for a long time. The, uh, from a personal perspective, said the vacant character. I hope it keeps on. And I hope you keep on watching these videos and uh, keeping in touch, coming to Salt Song, wonderful thing to do. Um, skillful means, there's a skillful means, which is much cheaper than, than uh, individual sessions. And uh, that's coming up in, in, in September, just about 10 days. So you sign up for that if you want to get to know more about this. And it's, or don't, I mean, <laughs> do, do what you're drawn to do. You can't do anything else. And uh, I just enjoy this. That's what, I actually, I do this because I can't not, but I noticed that I enjoy it anyway. I read this morning that the secret, uh, somebody was talking about the, the, one of the secrets to happiness is, oh, it was Alan uh, Watts and saying that the secret for him was to get paid doing, for doing the thing you love. And I'm guilty. 
and very happy about it. See you guys later. I love you. Bye-bye.